To set up a game of Imperius, each player will select one of the four faction mats. They will then claim the six cards that match that faction. The Noble, the Royal Guard, the Ambassador, the Assassin, the Commander, and the Elder. It is recommended for your first game that you use the basic Elders, which have no text abilities written on their cards. Place the eight control markers, or control tokens, that match the faction on the faction mat. And place the green casualty marker on the zero space of the casualty track at the bottom of the faction mat. Locate the four basic planets, these are the planets that do not have special abilities printed on them, and place them in the center of the table, one planet per player. You will also pull four random event cards out of the deck to be shuffled into the drafting deck that will be used throughout the game. For your first game, we recommend using the events Whispered Secrets, Orbital Bombardment, Diplomatic Envoy, and Coalition Forces. If setting up for a two-player game, you will use three of the basic planets, and also pull the Emperor's Legion card from the deck and place it near the planets. This card will be used in the two-player game and will be seated on a planet at the beginning of each dispatch phase. Place the score track in the center of the table where players can reach, and place all players' score markers on the zero space of the score track. Imperius is played in a series of rounds until the game ends with a player reaching or exceeding 20 victory points. Each round follows the same phases in a specified order. We start with a deal phase where players are dealt cards from the deck, followed by a drafting phase where players will draft cards including faction cards belonging to their own faction, faction cards belonging to other players, as well as the event cards in the deck. That is followed by a dispatch phase where cards are then deployed to planets, followed by a resolution phase where cards are revealed, reorganized in initiative order, and then resolved one planet at a time, and then a reset phase where cards are discarded, the first player token gets passed, and players check to see if the game ends. Once all players have selected their faction mats, place their control tokens and casualty markers, select one player at random, and give that player the first player marker. Then take all of the cards, each deck of faction cards, so four factions of six cards each, as well as the four event cards. Shuffle all of these faction decks as well as the event cards together to form the draft deck. Take the four planets that were drawn at the start of the game during setup and line them up in a horizontal line in the center of the table where all players can easily reach. Again, you will use a number of planets equal to your number of players, so in this case we're using four planets to demonstrate a four-player game. A three-player game would use three planets, and a two-player game would also use three planets and introduce that Emperor's Legion card. We first enter a deal phase where each player is dealt five cards. In a two-player game, deal each player six cards. You will have some cards left over once all cards have been dealt. This is perfectly normal and as the game is intended. We then enter the draft phase. During the draft phase, each player is going to look at their hand, choose one card to keep, and pass the remaining cards to the player to their left. This process will continue until all players have drafted four cards. Once players have drafted their hand of four cards, there are four cards left over. Those cards will be returned to the center of the table, where they're collected by the first player, shuffled, and randomly dispatched one card per planet to seed the planets for the dispatch phase. One note, when drafting cards in a two-player game, at the start of the draft phase, the two players will draft two cards apiece instead of the usual one. They will pass the remaining cards to their opponent and then continue drafting one card at a time until each player has drafted five cards. The remaining cards are mixed in with the Emperor's Legion card and seeded to the planets as normal, and then each player will draw a random card off the top of the deck to add to their hand, giving them a hand of six cards total to be used during the game. We now enter the dispatch phase. Beginning with the first player and proceeding clockwise around the table, each player will choose a card from their hand and deploy it from their hand to a single planet, and this will continue until each player has deployed all of the cards from their hand. Cards can be played to any planet, either face up or face down, but a few rules must be followed. There can never be more than two face down cards on any planet unless otherwise noted. If there are two face down cards on a planet already, a card played to that planet must be played face up. There can never be more than five cards total on a planet in three or four player games, including the initial card that was drafted at the end of the draft phase. If there are five cards on a planet already, a card being played must be played on another planet. During a two player game, 
The planet limit is four cards, not five. Once every player has played all of their cards, this phase will end. At the end of the dispatch phase, the board may look like this in a four player game. Notice each planet has no more than five cards on it, and there's not a single planet with more than two face down cards. Once all cards have been played, we enter the resolution phase. To begin the resolution phase, on the first planet, turn all face down cards face up. Cards will then be organized in order of initiative value, the number in the upper left hand corner of each card, starting with the zero cards or the lowest numbered cards, all the way through to the highest number card that has been deployed to that planet. Once face down cards are revealed and the cards are reordered in order of their initiative value, they will be resolved from top to bottom starting with the lowest numbered card on the planet proceeding to the highest numbered card. Looking on the first planet, we have a Zathmir Royal Guard with three strength, one favor, and a protect ability, meaning he could protect his noble if his noble was on this planet. The ambassador for Zathmir reads, if favored on this planet, score three victory points. So we check the favor values, which are these blue arrows that are pointing up. The red arrows pointing down stand for strength. So we look at the favor values. The ambassador brings two favor. The royal guard brings one. And there's a Zathmir assassin down here that brings zero. So our Zathmir player has a total favor of three. If that is the most, they will score three victory points. The Ashnan player has a favor of two. Our Quell player has a favor of one. So the Zathmir player will indeed score three victory points from their ambassador because they are the most favored on the planet. The next card on the planet is the Ashnan ambassador, which reads the same. If favored on the planet, gain three victory points. As we just calculated, the Ashnan player is not the most favored because Zathmir has three favor to Ashnan's two. So the Ashnan ambassador will not score. We then move to the next card, which is the Zathmir Assassin. The Assassin brings two strength and zero favor to the group, but has a keyword assassinate, which allows the Assassin to eliminate a noble from a rival faction if they're on the same planet. If the Assassin successfully eliminates a rival's noble, they will also score victory points. There is no noble on this planet, so the Zathmir Assassin will not eliminate one. And then finally, we come down to the commander for our Quell player. The commander brings one strength and one favor, and reads that if strongest on this planet, score a victory point and place a control token on this planet. So we look at the strength values. Our Quell player has a strength of one, and our Zathmir player, unfortunately for the Quell player, has a strength of five. So Zathmir is strongest on the planet, this Quell commander will not do anything. Moving to our second planet, we have revealed and reorganized the cards in order of initiative value and are ready to resolve that planet. The Elder of, Ga the, elder of the Ashnan uh, has, again, it's a basic Elder, no special text on the card, just bringing three favor. The Drakai player has deployed a Royal Guard to protect his Noble if his Noble is on the planet, and it doesn't look like that is the case. We then have an event card, and this event card reads that the favored faction on this planet places a control token on the planet. We look at the favor values and we see that the Drakai player has a value of 2, our Quell player has a value of 1, and our Ashnan player, even though there's no favor here, the Elder brings 3 favor, which will allow the Ashnan player to place one of their control tokens from their player mat on the planet. Control tokens are important for in-game scoring, and we will talk about that a little bit later. Having resolved the event, we then move to the next card in the line, which is the Ashnan player's Assassin. Again, having the assassinate ability to assassinate a rival noble, which is bad for our Quell player whose noble happens to be on the same planet. So the assassin is going to eliminate this noble, meaning that that noble will not activate its ability. Its ability is to score the victory points on the planet. So had this noble survived, it would have scored the three victory points for this particular planet. However, our Ashnan player has assassinated this noble, and that grants one victory point to our Ashnan player and gives our Quell player one casualty. Once all planets have been resolved, we are done with the resolution phase and are ready to enter the reset phase. At the end of our first resolution phase, we have our Quell player with four points, Drakai and Zathmir are tied at three, and our Ashnan player has scored a single point. Looking at the player boards, you will notice that House Quell and House Zathmir have both picked up a casualty by having their nobles assassinated and House Ashnan is missing a control marker because it was placed on one of the planets during the resolution phase. During the reset phase, all of the cards that were deployed to planets are going to be collected, shuffled, and added to the bottom of the deck. We are then going to pass our first player marker, one player to the left, so we have a new first player for the new round. Cards will then be dealt to players, 
drafted, added, or dispatched to planets, resolved, and this process will continue until one player reaches or exceeds 20 points. We then move to in-game scoring. Let's look at in-game scoring. The first thing we do in in-game scoring is score the planets and look at control tokens. On each planet, the faction who has placed the most control tokens on that planet will score that planet's victory points one last time. So looking at the first planet, our blue player has two of their control markers and no other factions are present. So our blue player will score two additional victory points for the planet. Moving to the second planet, our Ashnon player has two control tokens to the Quells 1, meaning the Ashnon player is going to pick up the three victory points for this planet, taking them from 18 to 21. The next planet in line, we have two Drakai control markers and two Quell control markers. This planet will not score because ties in Imperius are unfriendly. You must indeed beat your opponent to score the extra points. So this third planet, the four victory points there, will not be scored by either player. Then we move to our last planet. Our Drakai player has two control markers to the Ashnon player's one. So the Drakai player is going to pick up an additional five points, moving from 16 points up to 21 and tying themselves with the Ashnon player for second place. Players will then score one point for each control token that they have total on all of the planets. So our blue, pair, blue player will pick up an additional two points. Our Ashnon player is going to pick up three points for the control markers that they have on planets, taking them from 21 to 24. Our Quell player will also pick up three points, moving from 19 to 22. And then our Drakai player has four control tokens on the planet, moving them from 21 up to 25 and tied for first place. One more thing we need to do before determining a winner is lose points for casualties. Our Drakai player throughout the course of the game has picked up two casualties, meaning they will lose two points, giving them a final score of 23. Our Ashnon player unfortunately took a lot of casualties this game. Four casualties is four negative points, taking them back to 20. Our Quell player only picked up a single casualty, so they're going to go from 22 to 21 points. And our Zathmir player with three casualties is going to drop from 25 to 22. The Drakai player is victorious and is now sitting on the Dawn Throne.